What is up everyone, welcome back to another video and today we are in a familiar place. You might remember this. You remember this place? That's right, we are in Epping Forest and we are doing the return. Now, the reason why we're back so soon, I know I put an Epping Forest video out a couple months ago, is this location here where we camped, we had no idea. Apparently it was used for a lot of ritual sites and some of the trees around the surrounding area have uh, carvings in. Now, we're gonna go take a look around because I. I wanted to get here in the daylight, I wanted to see this, I wanted to see if it was true, so yeah, you already know, I'm joined by Flex, you already know how it is, Hello. me and Flex, on the grind, oh. again, long drive, took us six hours to get here, <sighs> anyway, we are geared up, we've got rolls of firewood, um, we're here, actually, I've not even told them yet, what we're actually doing, we are doing a 48 hour camp out here, so what we're doing, we're, we're camping out tonight, we'll go back to our hotel tomorrow morning, sleep a little bit and then return in the afternoon here to probably a different location though yeah. there's hangman's hill that we want to check out too um i'm going to try and interview some locals around the area as well we're actually going to go and see if there's anyone in the church and see if they know any stories um and then we're going to have a drive around have a walk around i'm actually going to put it out on instagram if anyone is about who lives in the area who's experienced anything or whatever so that's why you should definitely check my instagram out always instagram sport my fighters um yeah you already know right so uh flex is gonna fly the drone then i'm gonna fly my drone then we're gonna go for a wander um then we're gonna go back to the hotel uh i've got some parcels in here check these out look at all them that people have been sending us so we got some new gear to uh, to um, to look at, see what we've got. But I also wanted to address a video, I think it was might have been last video, the, year, the video before. Um, the video where we found the police. Now, one thing I will say is, there was there was a, a, a small number of people, probably about four or five, and they were typing stuff like, you know, snitches get stitches, grasses. One guy was like, oh, you deserve to be cancelled because you wasted the police time. You know, it's people like that that um, I have no time for at all you know the, the that's the kind of mentality that you know the, the world would go to shit if uh, everyone had that mentality um, now when it comes to say for example if I was in Tesco's right and I saw someone uh, putting food in the pockets and stuff I wouldn't say a word I just walk off my own business right because that's nothing to do with me but when someone's in there stripping copper out of a building, causing thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of damage, and destroying history, that is something to do with me, and I will always stand my ground, and I will always intervene, whether it be myself or the police. Now, don't forget, I wanted to talk to them, but um, these guys, under caution, decided that they didn't want to, so I followed their lead, because I don't want to be left on, on my own. So, if I ever came to that situation again, or if I could relive that, I would do the exact same thing. Even though they couldn't charge him, they stopped him from doing it. And uh, one last thing as well, someone else said, uh, oh, I knew who they were, they were explorers. No, they wasn't, I saw I saw who was in there. Trust me, they were not explorers. Um, and they barricaded, so we got in through a window, which they barricaded, and as we're walking through, they barricaded another room because they were settling down for the night because they finished what they were doing that day, and they were gonna start in the morning or whatever, I don't know, but they were barricading them themselves in so trust me they were not explorers i can promise you that and i'm pretty sure if you put in a uh, freedom of information request to them as i please they will also confirm that but anyway on with the video right so we're going to take a wander through here this is um obviously where we were last time um we camped over in that direction we'll probably head towards near where we camped I don't think it's like active. It's, I don't know. No, I don't think so. But I think there's still people getting buried here though. So it's the trees we've got to look out for, apparently. The trees have got symbols of them. Old or are they new? I don't know. That's just initials or that. J B A B. And some. 
Yeah. So that's people have been building little huts and shelters here. All these trees over here are all falling down. But it's literally just over there where we camp. Let's go and take a look. This is where we camped last time. Right here. <laughs> yeah, right here. You can just about see a couple of the burnt bits. See, we cover our tracks well. Proper stealth. So, um, I've been doing some research on Iping Forest and I had no idea how bad it was. Like, I had no idea. In 1991, um, a teenager stood in front of a jury in court and told them how there was uh, ritual uh, satanic sacrifices in the forest and one of them was was um, jail for life for killing the sisters in here um, I'm just gonna I don't know how I'm gonna do it but I'm, there's a way there's gonna have to be a way where I tell you everything that's happened here it's um, no wonder it's damn haunted honestly <laughs> no wonder this place is haunted flags I've heard some stories well, God knows how many people have actually been killed in here. Uh, well, the, the wars that I read in the in the sixties, there was a dozen bodies found in the same area. Was that was that not the uh, the pond? So it was something different. Something different Damn. Thing. But in nineteen sixty six, there was some as well. Damn. This is just stretches. It's stre oh, oh, there's actually a good one. Was it nineteen sixty six? The woman in the car. Yeah, it was round about that period, yeah, so there was a woman in a car, yeah, round about 1966, round about that sort of period, um, she was found dead in her own car with a crossbow arrow through her head. <laughs> Some medieval murders going on round here. Um, right, let's head that direction, direction and look at trees. So what else I want to say is I've got some new equipment, so uh, I've got some new equipment to use tonight in the forest. Plus I want to say a big shout out to Carl Dark Arts. Um, he sold me his um, night vision camera. So now, finally, after years and years of people asking, saying, come on Dan, get some night vision cameras so we can actually see you in a tent when the lights are out, I have one, a really good one. So I'll be using that tonight too. This area has got a lot of uh, trees that are just it appears to be fallen. Actually, I think the ground slightly. No, it's not. I thought the ground was sodden. That's what's causing to lean over. But and they all seem to be falling that way. You not noticed? It's. It did say online something to do with the um, the witchcrafty type stuff that had gone on. Right. It's uh, messed up the aura of the forest. Okay. So it's let the trees grow in some weird weird positions. Right. I don't know how true that is. It's very similar to higher battery forest in Romania that I visited. Maybe this could be a spot where we camp. We could camp here. This is going to be one of the spots, right? <gasps> what? Oh shit. Is it wet? I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to touch it. Yeah, it's fairly wet. It's been there a while. That. Right, let's look round. That's a little bit worrying. So just That's uh, a little bit worrying. But yeah, we're going to camp there. So me and Flex have just been talking about like what if we actually found the body. Um, you know, it's it'd be a rare occurrence if that, that ever did happen. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people do stuff online, it's like found this body here and there, obviously it's not real. Um, but if we came into contact, would we, obviously we wouldn't film it because, you know, I'm not, I'm not out here do, trying to do a Logan Paul in a forest. Um, it's true, it's true. No one's trying to do that. But um, I would, I would, um, I'd probably stand back at the car and then film like the police, police process of it all. Um, would I still camp here that night? I don't know. It's a good question. Would, would I? Would you? Let me know down below. If we ever found a body, do we still camp? Random, random question. It's probably the most random thing I've ever asked. Well, it looks like there's a um, path going through the whole place.
Oh yeah, see that? There's some trees over there growing a bit weird. Yeah. yeah. There's one in particular, a big green one. And funny enough, I see something carved in that tree. I might do my intro again. Or maybe it once was, it's grown out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this tree does look a little... It's just the way it's like curving round. I mean, it could be normal, I guess, but... Maybe it's because it's... Um, like leaning sideways. Oh, that's a spooky looking damn tree though, that one there. Well, that one? Yeah, <laughs> let's get a close look at that one. It's hard to see it properly. Let me, hold on, let me switch to manual. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better, but yeah, it's uh, quite a spooky, spooky looking old tree that. Do you know what I've just kind of noticed? What? Right, over that way, mm. we need to go and look at the trees over that way because if they're leaning that way, if you notice, it's like all the trees are trying to get away. <laughs> like, they're all leaning this way. Yeah. That trying They're leaning out. that way. Them ones over there are leaning that way. <laughs> if them ones over there are leaning that way, it means like the centre of there could have been where witchcraft was taking place. I, I mean, I'm just shooting out theories here, but you just never know. You've got a point, though. At least with a... Uh, What's that mean? Is that the, I think, the trail? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I've seen a couple of green dots. Oh, yeah. Um, don't forget, Epping Forest is absolutely massive. This is a tiny, tiny portion of the place. Uh, there is many different places to go here in camp. So I've got a feeling even after we've done this 48 hour stay over, we're still gonna have to come back and do more because there's so much more to see and do. It's a bit of a crossroads. I can't remember which one we took. Let's go start on this one. Just gotta head towards the church, that's all. Epping Forest is far worse than I ever imagined. So obviously we've been here a couple of times before, but I decided to do a little bit more research this time. And yeah, I'm pretty damn shocked. From murders, dog walkers just being blasted in the back of the head innocently, to sisters being dragged in by their kin and sacrificed to the devil. This place is so notorious. It warrants major investigations here. But you already know we're going to be camping out. And I'm going to try and tell you as many of these stories as possible over this episode to try and give you that look at how dark and sadistic it is. But luckily we're meeting up with someone right now who is going to tell us some of the history because they have personal ties here, lived here all their life, and their granddad was once the gatekeeper here. Let's go. Right, okay, so we're in Epping Forest, um, and I, I put it out on Instagram, I was like, looking for people who have had real life experiences, who know the area, who've grown up here, and they can tell us some more in history, so if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Corinne, and um, I've lived here my whole entire life, and my great-grandfather was the head forest keeper for the whole of Epping Forest. Wow. So, so he looked after the whole place? Yeah. Yeah, so you usually have around about 13 keepers that will look after the whole place because it goes okay. from London all the way up until North Weald. Um, but he was like the head keeper and there's a lot of jobs that they have to do in order to... Do we know how big the, the forest is? Mm. Is it 13,000? No, it's 5,000 and... 5,400 5, acres, so, somewhere, yeah, somewhere, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty large. Yeah. Uh, okay. So in, in terms of like this church we'll talk about this church first so we're going to be camping here around the back again tonight not in the same area uh, same location as last time it's just a bit further down it's actually where we found the shoe we found the shoe in the forest um, can you tell us some history about this place what do you know so this is the church of innocence and i believe it was around 1873 that it was okay. made at the time it only cost 900 pounds to make wow um and before that it's actually the second church in High Beach because the first one was called St Paul's um, and that ran out of funding and ended up yeah, great right. basically. And, um, so this one kind of took over its place when it was funded by a guy called Thomas, I think Byford or Byford. Um, and since then, even though it has the name Church of Innocence, it's uh, been known for a lot of witchcraft and satanic rituals and lots of scary demon stuff going on here which you wouldn't expect from a place of worship and light. <laughs> I did see some out online but is, is it just from people like visitors coming here like satanic people coming here or is it 
from inside the church? We have no evidence that it comes from inside the church, um, but no. obviously Epping Forest is widely known as one of the most haunted forests in the UK. Yeah. So I think it draws a lot of attention from other places anyway. Yeah. Um, and forests have always got that energy about them. So I think it draws people in anyway. But. So we, we've been to, well, I've been to forests around the world mm. and me and Flex have done a, a hell of a lot of forests around the UK. And I've got to say, this is the one that keeps drawing us back. This is the one that feels different to all the rest. I mean, I've been in, I've been in high battery forests in Romania. Mm. It's meant to be the most haunted forest in the world. I can I can assure you this place is worse. So, like, mm. why why is that? What do you know about it? Why is it so dark? There have been a hell of a lot of murders that have happened here, and a lot of I'm not sure if YouTube will let me say suicides. Um, or unaligned yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, that have happened in this forest and there is definitely two types or two faces to this forest you can walk through and it's peaceful it's calm there's loads of deer running around there's rabbits um, this used to be a royal forest so it literally was used purely just for the royal family to hunt deer okay. um, and then it was eventually given over and made into a public forest um, and they kind of knuckled down on hunting and yeah. illegal picking of mushrooms and things like that. Um, and then the second side is like right now as the mist is like slowly creeping yeah. in, um, when it hits night time, when the mist kicks in, there's a completely different side. If it ever goes silent in this forest, there is something going on. Right, remember that. <laughs> next, next video, remember that. Silence, fog, any other signs to look yeah, out for? Yeah, literally, you'll notice the deers start to prick their heads up, their ears start going, and they either go very quiet or they run. Right, so the rain is coming down, so we're not going to take too long. But could you tell me some of the past experiences you have had here? Uh, so they've varied from small, you know, seeing things at the side of your eyes, or, um, you know, thinking that you see something but you're not entirely sure, all the way up to, I definitely saw something that was terrifying and I'm not coming back. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, there's a lot of soldiers that walk the forest and right. I've heard them um, when I've been doing night trials and stuff, you hear a lot of marching and you can hear drums sometimes. Right. Um, and you can hear a lot of like the twigs and that breaking but you yeah. know that it's not you know wildlife breaking or anything it kind of matches in time with like the marching sound and you can hear sometimes the shouting but not like um a man shouting you know that kind of like attention yeah they do. you kind of hear like that one sharp note right and then it stops um so i've heard that a lot and driving through once uh, in the evening I kind of looked over at the side of the road and I literally had to slam my brakes on because there was a gentleman just standing at the edge of the world full um, like wartime I'm, I'm not too clued up with war but um, full wartime grey uniform um, arm stuck here with the hat in his hand and what looked like something in his hand so I don't know whether not that they carry spears but either like the musk musket yeah or musket gun or gun or something but a really long gun uh the ones that have the really long so that would that like would have been kind of 17 gun. that would have been like 1700s possibly yeah I well mean, i mean that's where well, a lot musket. of the in, yeah a lot of the information that we get is from around the 17s and 1800s so, so you've actually seen a full bodied yeah, apparition and he literally was just stood as clear as you are in front of me um and i literally i'd slammed on my brakes so i first had to do a quick check around me that i wasn't causing an incident in the road but at that time of night one two in the morning no one around anyway literally turned the light on inside the car to check inside the car because you know you get that feeling like someone's yeah. in the car with you no one in the car with me turned the light off looked and he just kind of turned and walked back into the forest so i reversed a little bit and i turned my headlights to have a look no one there no like clearly a massive gap so not that someone could have hidden around a tree yeah. or anything like like two trees here and then like massive gap so there's nowhere he could have run to nowhere and he just disappeared and at that point i just gave myself a breather i was like you're prepared for this you know what the history is of this forest like just leave it um and drove off and then i think 
my most recent one probably happened about a year ago now and that was near the Wakes Arms roundabout. Okay. Um, there is a headless biker that goes around right. um, who was involved in a road traffic incident and um, he runs out in front of cars oh. all the time. Okay. And driving through these forests you learn a lot that you you can drive you can drive to a certain speed but you need to be wary of deer running across you yeah. all the time. So when it gets to a certain time what of was night. That? What? Is that noise? I didn't hear anything because I got that one Oh I think, sorry I think it's a plane. It sounded like a roar at first. Oh. I mean you get that kind of roar noise in here but I do think that was a plane. Yeah, no I still hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, out in from the forest it was like roar. Yeah. Um and literally so i was prepared at all times for deer to just run across the front of me especially if you start seeing them on the edge of the road and i just saw a guy wearing complete black and from about here upwards i couldn't see anything so right. i can't tell you if he was headless or not but i physically it was so dark and he was wearing all black and it looked like bike leather um but i don't know it's that dark literally darted across the front of my car but to the point where all of the parking sensors on the front of my car went like yellow red and then they're like right. and there's literally nothing in front of me um i stopped and i had to pull myself over to the side of the road because i'm having a bit of a panic and my dad always said you lock all the doors just in case you don't trust yeah. anything in these forests um looked around couldn't see anything i was like i'm not getting out of the car i didn't hit anything so i'm just going to carry on but as i started pulling away again all of the sensors Bing, red, ding, 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 like something is in front of my car. And I was like, at this point, I either get out and check or you just keep driving and hope that you don't hit something. And I think for a good five, six minutes down the road, it just kept coming off. And then ding, 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 something getting close to the car again and then coming back off. Once I had reached about the six minute mark and I was just starting to come out of the forest, everything fine again. Never had a problem with my senses. Right. I understand people can be like, that's car could be something dodgy could have a bit of dirt on your senses or whatever but it, it never happened any other time um well i mean you physically saw something as well so yeah, yeah, to have the I, two happen at the same yeah, time it's like literally and then the whole time i sat in my car the back sensors were going off and normally your back sensors don't go off unless you put the car in reverse yeah so to have someone like literally it was like they were prowling around my car the whole time and i couldn't see them right at all so that was one of the scary things that happened to me Okay, uh, interesting. <laughs> so yeah. there's, there's a hell of a lot more than we even knew. That, but every time we come here, we learn more and more, uh, more ghost stories, more hauntings, more apparitions. It's like it's never ending. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you always get like the common things: people feeling like they've been touched, people feeling like their hair's been pulled, their coat's been pulled. That happens quite a lot just randomly walking through here, and people don't always necessarily think about it because you've got lots of like twigs from trees that could be catching as you walk past them. Yeah. but there are times where people have like tripped and fallen and there's nothing on the floor like no log bit sticking out of the ground or anything and you know they say that a lot of that is happening and there's a lot of people walking around that you think are people and they are not people they're people <laughs> that died here so right so what we got to do in future if we see someone just go over and pull the jacket make sure they're real <laughs> yeah Just be careful if you're ever exploring here because there is a forest pool or pond called the suicide pond I know about that one. and that funny that you should say this forest seems to call to you that pond is meant to call to people in order to kill yourself really right. was, um, it, was that the one that they drew they dragged to like 21 bodies out of so a lot of bodies have been found in it but apparently it started about 300 years ago when a whole romeo and juliet couple oh, who right, weren't yeah. allowed to be together um committed suicide in the pool and it turned the pool like murky you could no longer see into it it went dark it went tar and swampy like yeah. and um after that all the plant life around it started dying right. and any animals that were drinking near it were dead next to it and stuff and a load of people the the location isn't known no one has let that location out there's a couple of people who say they know where it is and it's that evil that they will not ever tell anyone where it is um but it will draw you in and try and get you to kill yourself or within five minutes of being there you will run 
Sounds like our next question. <laughs> well, that was actually going to be my next question. Do you know where this place is? I but don't actually know, do you know where it is. Does? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I know where it is. Um, if anyone knows where that pond is, tell us. That'd be it, a good one. Yeah, it is evil, and I think there are a lot of places in this forest I wouldn't even walk, and I've walked these forests for years. Right. So. Now that leads me to another question then. Mm. If there was going to be a place you would categorically stay away from, mm. I feel like someone's behind me. If there was a place you were going to categorically stay away from, where would it be? Trying to find that pond. Really? <laughs> I would right. keep away from that pond because if you really get that, if it is really true that you get that pull in and that want to go near it. They, they, they always warn you that no matter how hot it is in this forest, there are so many pools and lakes and ponds in here. Do not swim in any of them. Do you know why that is? Because you don't know which one it is. Do you know why there's so many? A lot of them are either man-made or they are made from the war bombs. Oh, she knows. <laughs> she knows I, was, the I was hoping she wasn't going to know. So <laughs> she knows like, the stuff. Ha, ha, I know this. There, is, there is a lot of... Um, there's a lot of stuff in this forest that is related to the wars. Right. Um, there is a bunker around here somewhere oh. that is um, apparently not a English bunker, and it was German soldiers hiding in it so that they could try and work out. I know it would have been when the resistance were fighting yes, them. I read about this. But, yeah. yeah. So um, and then obviously you've got places like Dick Turpin's hideout and things like that. Yeah. Um, camp. I yeah, probably pronounced Lousy that wrong. Camp. That's it. Yeah. So we're actually um, we're spending forty eight hours here. Good so luck. this is really the, this is gonna, there's going to be a, like a free video special. Yeah. There's going to be this video, which is the daytime video. Mm -hmm. There's going to be night one you and night two. Yeah. So night one is going to be. I don't this... envy you. I wouldn't camp here. Really? Why? I, I I'm a bit of a chicken when it comes to things. Like that. I love the paranormal and I love things like that. And you know, I've been on my fair few paranormal experiences, but I wouldn't camp in a forest, any forest, and I wouldn't camp in this forest. So before we move on somewhere else, mm -hmm. do you know how many bodies have been found here? Not an exact number. Um, they still believe that there are a lot that haven't been found, yeah. but I know that they've pulled 20 odd bodies out of different ponds. They've found probably over 300 bodies. I was going to say, because it, from what from what the research I'd done online, it was somewhere between the 200 to 1,000 so over, over 100 years. This forest is so dense, as horrible as it is to say, it's very easy, people think, to hide a body. Okay. Um, if you think how many people walk through this forest every day, there's still going to be places that people aren't going to walk through because we yeah, naturally course. make trails as we walk yeah. and people stick to trails really. <laughs> so Partners. there's probably, there could be fresh bodies here today that you wouldn't even know uh, Well, we're right. gonna, we, we mentioned this before, we're going to try and not pull a Logan Paul. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> I wouldn't right. do that. Right, let's move on. <laughs> Well, it seems like we've got a hell of a lot of stuff to do here. Obviously, we're here for a 40-hour special right now. So you've got this video that's dropped today. In a few days, you'll have night one. And a few days after that, you'll have night two. Because I'm going back to two videos a week. And we're really going to try and smash it. It just means we're going to have to get, get out more. And especially with this forest, I believe it's going to probably take about 10 episodes in total to cover this entire subject. So yeah, just a quick Google search. There's so much that comes up. It's, it's overwhelming. It really is. Um, but this pond in particular, there is a, a pond that calls to you. It's the Curse Pond. And we believe we found it. And on night two, we camped next to it. And it was probably one of the craziest nights I've ever had. You gotta wait for that one. Anyway, right now we're gonna head over to the hotel uh, and I have a special food review thing to do and unboxing some stuff. So yeah, if you're not that interested in that, you can turn off, but it's pretty fun. So what have you bought now? Oh, Flex, right, okay. I spent 80 pound 95 at Tim Hortons, right? So I looked on Uber, obviously we were meant to be dieting. I didn't want to spend any money, but then I saw it, I never tried it before, and I know it's a Canadian place, so I was like, you know what, let's do like we did at Wendy's, and order one of everything on the item, all on the menu, but I didn't order one of everything because I don't like tuna, 
I don't know if uh, Fight is dead, so I didn't order it. I don't know, I didn't order it. But it's, um, I did order one. Try to order, I think there's a couple of things I ordered two of. Mm. Here we go, we got some waffle fries. But the only thing is, where's the um, salt? Mm. Actually, not bad, cold though. Where's the sauce? Got <laughs> garlic, a garlic one, ketchup, sweet chilli. Did not put in, which was like a chip or one or some sort, I don't know what it was. Oh, did not put barbecue in as well. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> what do you think of them? Terrible. They're cold, they're soggy, very wet. The the trouble is, I've been in that bag. On top of it, oh, yeah. Not like McDonald's, but I ain't getting green. They're, they're not great, I'm not gonna lie. Right, this is. <laughs> this is a chicken burger stack. Right? And I think there's two of these. That's not it. 20 minutes later. I believe there's two of them. Tell. Tell you what, you try that, right, okay. and I'll try this one, and then we'll. Oh no, it's, I think oh, it's chicken. Well, so this is a chicken stack with uh, a hash brown on it. All right. Okay. opinion go on there's um, a place in, in the UK which is called Chester's Chicken and it's uh, basically like the cheapest nastiest takeaway you can get although sometimes it's okay but to be honest it actually tastes like a, a Chester's Chicken burger so what's yours well yours is the same so here's the, the chicken yeah, the same. brown yeah it's again, it's very soggy. I can feel a theme on coming on here. Very soggy. It is pretty soggy, yeah. You can almost feel it's warm though. You can feel the moisture in, in the bun, but I mean, it wouldn't stop me eating it. You know, if, if, I, was, if I was hungry. I mean, I'm starving. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Fucking any drinks. What? Got to be in there. No, it's chicken and more fucking fries. What? 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 what the hell is this? I've had them before, they are very nice. How did you send pack? You sent me a <laughs> as well. A 20 pack. <laughs> right, because so right, they've not sent me. <laughs> let, let me let me let me tell you what they've not sent. I don't even, they've hardly sent me anything. They've literally, they've literally not sent me any beef burgers. Let's check the receipt, right? So there should be drinks on there. Six pack of donuts. Them, tin bits. It should be 10 tin bits, but they sent me 30. Yeah, there's no drinks on there that I can tell. Oh no, there is a drink. Yeah, sherbet lemon. lemon cooler. I got a cherry lemon. I got a cherry cooler. Cork. Cork. Well, yeah, I've got the cork. And we're missing the coolers. Hmm. Right. I'm gonna be making a phone call soon. This is another. This is another stack. What? It's another chicken stack. The same shit. Right. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion right now, and you can keep this in or you can take it out. What are you doing? What are you doing? What? What are they doing? So that's full of stacks. <laughs> right. 
while we wonder what's going on, I'm gonna keep eating this one. And then we've got these. So, right, looking like we're not able to try the, um, we're not able to try any beef burgers today. They were like, you know what? Fuck those guys. They're not having beef burgers. I was looking forward to a double cheeseburger. Right, there you go, you've got a wrap. Let's try this. It's grilled shut. You got well, looks like a fillet in there with some looks like that supercharger mayo that they do at um, KFC. Can't get mine out. There we go. I was I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna look inside. Just cover it. Chicken is bland. Very no dry. taste at all. I give that a 2 out of 10. Okay, that's very dry. 2 out of 10. Shocking. Hot dog. There's more seasoning on there than there was on that one. But I mean, that's very dry. That You, you need a drink every 5 seconds to eat that. I didn't know what, I didn't know, you know what I mean? It's like they put in every sauce you can think of that would not go with a hot dog. Where's, Wait, where's the mustard? The strong mustard. You've got ketchup. I don't like ketchup really. Oh no, hold on, hold on. I've made a discovery. Oh, it's got it underneath. It's, it's already. Oh, there. right, okay. Five out, out, five, out, five out of ten for me. I was going to say five out of five, but no, five out of ten. Feels like it's been sat around for a few hours. Oh god. Very tough. <laughs> Very tough. I've gotta I've gotta <laughs> say I've not tried the burgers, the beef burgers, but I've gotta say, stay the hell away from Tim's. So far this is dreadful. The hot dog itself, do you know when you go to Tesco or Morrison's or like you get the, the loads of little ones in the, in the glass jar? Mm. They like that. Mm. There's no substance to it, there's no flavour. It's just it's horrible. Look at the, look at that. Not even kidding you. I'm not gonna have another bite of that, it's not. I'm not even kidding you, this is probably the worst takeaway I've had in years. And they forgot everything, what the hell? Right, what's in here? Oh, the coolers are here! What? Oh, they put them here, all right, okay. All right. Oh, that explains right. the extra box that shouldn't Forget be what there, I said right. about, about the drinks, right? So we've got these coolers here. There's a cherry and a lemon. All right. There's a chance to come back here. So, so. He didn't send us 30 uh, Timbits. Alright, do you want to try Timbit? I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i had these before, I'm not going to say what I like. Yep. Um, I already know my opinion of these. It's not good. Right. Texture at first was nice, nice and soft. But they just taste like Morrison's Donuts. Just cheap Morrison the Donuts. Mm -hmm. And the price of them, right? Do you want to read the price of the Donuts? Do. Holy shit! <laughs> Is that correct? Is that the price? No, that's correct. £15.49. So them, them tin bits were how much? They were £5 or something. That one? Yeah. £5.49 £5 and the one right. you're about to open now was £15.49 They've sent me the wrong ones as well I ordered the deluxe Oh right, that is it You know what, I've had enough now I'm ringing them fucking hell What a joke What a joke I almost wish someone was in the area and we can give the rest of them I wouldn't even I wouldn't waste the taste buds Uh, hello? Hello. 
Um, I made a, a large order and uh, you sent me some wrong items. Uh, which one? Which uh, uh, it was uh, to the Harlow Hotel. Yes, uh, you ordered to the app? Yes. Which one? Uh, Uber. Like, uh, Okay, uh, what was the order? Um, it was Dandy uh, 376DF. Okay, well, what is it? Is there anything missing in that? Yeah, there's um, two beef burgers missing, and there is um, the deluxe donuts because you sent me the the other donuts. You ordered deluxe donuts? Yeah. Okay, well, what is the Yeah, it was a deluxe donut six pack. I will check with my team actually. Okay. Uh, we are not doing any beef burgers actually. It's a run out of the beef. Right, okay. Uh, only the donut. So, uh, actually, the, uh, the person who, who made that, that, he made regular one. I think uh, they ordered deluxe beef donut. Check. Is there any chances uh, you're going to order one more order in that? Um, uh, if you come and collect it, that's fine, I, I, I'll, I'll make that uh, six donuts for you. Right, okay, so can I just get a refund on Uber then? Ah, uh, you can go to the Uber, they can do the refund. Right, okay, okay, thank you for that. Yeah. Thanks, bye. Yeah, so the, <coughs> obviously the, the not native English speakers and the, um, the first person who rang me up, I, I didn't understand, what, I just agreed, I didn't really understand what he was saying, I just agreed with what he, what he was saying. Um, and he was saying that there's no beef burgers, so they've put in extra chicken burgers. And this obviously is a mistake because I ordered the deluxe ones, which is like filled donuts rather than hollow ones. Don't try one anyway. We may as well, they're just gonna go on. I mean, there is one filled, not two filled ones, but. It's great, I'm gonna go for that one. Uh, what is it? For £80, this was. The biggest regret of 2023 so far. Oh, wow. This this was bad. Let's try this. Is that the wrong one? <laughs> That's mango. <laughs> How many more things can they get wrong? That's, we'll try that. It's not lemon. Right, I, I am going to say one thing, one positive, one positive thing, just one. That's quite nice. Is it? I don't know what it is, but it's nice. Is it salty caramel or could be maybe um, maple, uh, Canadian maple. Could be. I am going to finish this. Oh uh, right, okay. That's <laughs> top tip. <laughs> Stay away from Tim Hortons. Yeah, Hortons. Um. Well, it might be good other times, but obviously our order was utter garbage. Um, it's a shame as well, because it's going to get thrown out, because it's just, I don't even feel like it's ed edible. Mango, I know. Mm, yeah, definitely mango. Um, maybe the staff running it are just not very good here. Uh, maybe the sort of, maybe in Canada, maybe obviously the founders of it, it might be brilliant, but if you've had it before, let me know down below your thoughts on it. Uh, if you're from Canada and you know this uh, this fast food chain and you've eaten there before and you like it, let me know your thoughts down below. Um, but yeah, overall, I would give this um, a two star rating out of ten. I would probably and that's that's only being generous. I I'll give them a two and a half just because the donuts are quite nice. See, I would have given them two and a half if they delivered the beef burgers, but I mean, they even I mean, why would you have the beef burgers on still? True. Uh, but yeah, guys, anyway, um, so sorry it was uh, a let down, but yeah, on to the next review. You already know. Right, we discovered uh, there was one more package, like just inside, and um, I'm just re uh, getting some money back. They had some more cold waffle fries, but look at the fucking state of them. I feel sick. I don't, I'll smash the mirror with that. It's gonna... rock solid. I'm gonna rip one in half. Hey, look at that! Look at it's it! It's dry as a bone. You can see the burn mark on it. Look at the state of that. You see the burn mark. Screw it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this for an experiment, right?
Ugh. It, it feels rubbery. Like, it oh, literally it. feels like rubbery. Look at that. Look at, look at the way it springs back. No. That is disgusting. No. I'm going to keep this because um, I can I can help us, uh, you know, because I've got I've got an axe in the car and I can help uh, split the wood. I'm just going to pull out the wood, you know, hit it and split the wood. So that's what I'll use that for. That's um, disgusting. That. How, 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 could you be, how could you take pride in serving people food it, if it looks like that? Listen, uh, well, I'm currently getting a refund for some of the stuff, but what? biggest, biggest uh, letdown of the century. Look at how dry it is. I wouldn't even feel comfortable giving that to the fudge. That I wouldn't actually choke on it. I should be able to chew that. Right, what's what's going on here? I don't know, because I don't know what it is. Hold on, let me turn this back. What is that? Oh, it's super wet on the bottom though. Yeah, look at that. Oh dear god. I'm gonna have to have a shower. Maybe we just watch too much Gordon Ramsay, I don't know. No, no, there's a fine line between eating anything and, you know, being at least honest. Can we get some close up on that chicken? Bring that chicken over here. Back. It looks like shit that you find in an abandoned building. <laughs> you know, and some, like cat shit or something. Right, okay, Flex, we have a few parcels. Um, that have accumulated because we haven't filmed the camping video in like what? How long has it been? A month? About a month. Yeah, okay. Um, so I've like par partially opened some of them because obviously I ordered quite a lot from Amazon and I uh, didn't know what was what, but yeah, let's dig in. Um, so these. These are bought from the wish list on Amazon. Obviously, I don't like taking cash donations, so if you did want to help out, there is a wish list where you can pick up just little bits for our explorers and our travels to help and uh, make videos that we wouldn't normally make. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. If you do pick up something, uh, yeah, let's open these up. Right. Let's, let's open this one first, then. You grab one end, and I'm going to the other. Oh, don't make too much of a mess. Why? I'm going to sleep here. It is. Yeah, but I'm going to sleep in it for two days. Oh, no. There's a box inside. Whoa, don't make too much mess. Alright, what is this? Um, I don't know. Have you got, like, a knife or something? Uh, it says electric air pump. What? Electric air pump. I need, I need to put I've not put an electric air pump. Well, what's that for then? I don't know. Where's, where's my keys? What? Where's my keys? Where's my keys? Right. Oh, well. I have not put a pump on, I'm telling you now. Hold it. Well, we're about to get a big surprise. This is something else. Uh, hang on. What? Oh, no, it's fine. Carry on. Right, okay. What is? Well, be careful of the box. What? Because it's not gonna, it's not got a box. It's, there's no box in the box. Mm. I know what it is. Is it your mum's? No. We need to. We're gonna have to open it up because we need to find the, the uh, note. We've not, we've not worked this out, well, no. Um, what is it? I'm still clueless. Wait, in that bag? Oh, I know what it is now. I know what it is. Is it in that bag? Yeah, it is. I know what it is now. I'll let you crack on. Right. I know what it is. Hold on. This is from Brian. Enjoy your gift. I love your videos from Brian. And this... This is an inflatable bed for the car. It's actually specifically made for the car. So you've got inflatable bits that go in the footwells. This inflates throughout the whole back so we can literally sleep in the car comfortably. Yeah, that's that's uh, um, unbelievable. Thank you so much, Brian. That is uh, gonna come in handy, especially when we're on our long drives home when we stop at the service station. I mean, you guys have seen it. 
we stop at the service station and it's so uncomfortable. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you so much. Right, what's that there? That goes with it. It's a puncher pick. I'm going to pump the open, but we're going to go for it. Put it there. Ready? Okay, so don't know what that is. Oh, the camping cots. Oh. We were just saying, right, so we were just literally saying we messed up because we didn't bring our ground sheet. And we were like, right, we're gonna, we'll are gonna buy one. And then uh, the range closed at nine. And because we had that crappy food, we weren't able to get it. So now we have these where we can sleep on them. <sighs> Who's that from? Saved. Brian. Brian's not there, there is no one there. No. no. Oh, I don't know actually. Oh, there. Oh, Deidre! Deidre! Hope these will keep you guys drier while you rest. Love from Deidre. Thank you so much. Oh, God, you, you have treated us well. You saved the night, literally. Yeah, that has saved the night, yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much. Right, on to the next one. That's quite heavy that, Dan. That sounded metallic. I felt like I know the sound of that. I think it does know the sound of it. Oh! I feel like Christmas. 12 Red Bulls! <laughs> Red Bull! That is probably one of the best things you could ever buy for us because we go for it. <laughs> We go through eight Red Bulls a day or something like that. <laughs> this is from Cat, Cat MC. Enjoy. Also, there are several items I would recommend for outdoors. I'm serving military, so I have some experience. How I, how would I go about sharing the ideas with you? Um, drop me a message on Instagram. I try and go through them. Um, if you do it now, when this video goes up, yeah, don't do it. Wait till a day later because I tend to, when I put a video up, I get swamped with messages because I'm normally telling people like to let me know what they think and stuff. Uh, so yeah, message me a day later, but honestly, tonight we will run off Red Bull. Thank you so much. Get ready. Thank you. And by the way, the, the staff members gave us some funny looks carrying all these parcels in. Pull these notes aside. I'm gonna read this out while it's. Oi, I know what it is. What? It's another heated jacket. Are oh, you like joking me? No. So we both got one. Yeah. I've got my mummy as well. Oh, we can match. We can twin it. Yeah, we can. We're gonna have a team. It's from Deidre. Literally, you're right. joking me. You have saved us. So you're much. joking me. So that's tents, the, the sleeping, sleeping bags, bags, the cots, and the two heated jackets. Wow. It says, warmth is a necessary and sharing sucks. Happy camping. Wow, honestly, dear. Thank Andrew, you. Holy crap. Tonight's episode is de dedicated uh, to all you guys. There's one more, actually. Oh, um, I didn't say that one, but that is literally oh, going to... Oh, see there. No, I didn't see it. Tea here. Oh, I'm good. We were watching a bit of tea before. Oh, whoa. Oh, it's a solar-powered uh, power bank. Oh. <laughs> you know how good these are? I, I've got one, but yeah, you have an old one. And I, 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 I was, I, I know they are good because that, you know, before USB C came out, yeah, with the micro USB one, it's about ten year old, right. and the battery has started to swell in it. That's how old it is. It doesn't work now, but they are brilliant. Wow. Whoever bought that, well done. Oh, this legendary one. Like, oh, this is gonna come in perfect handy because, because. This this is an IR illuminator. <gasps> and what do I have vision. tonight? It's like fate. I've got I've got the night vision camera with me. First time ever using it while I got off call. And now we've got an IR illuminator. Like a, a, a it's a project. It's, it's like a it's like a booster. A booster. I need me one of them for mine. Wow. Oh, honestly, thank you so much. Who's that from? Um, from Stephanie Wood. Um, Oh, right, right, I'm going to try and pronounce this one. Um, had, uh, had only gi li gwen. Li, li wen. Uh, bring on 2023 with more of your epic adventures. Love from Stephanie Wood. <laughs> I think it's Welsh. Oh, okay. See? Um, 
Nadolik Le Guin. We've just insulted Sorry. the whole country right now. There's going to be lots of, lots of um, Welsh people chasing after us. Send him a message on how to break that down to say. Yeah, that's there's always a way. I know people in Wales. Just put it in the comments if, if anyone can break that down. Not, spell it out. Not all ick. Now the double L is is it means something else, doesn't it? I don't know. The, the, the double L is silent. Pronounced. Sorry, everyone. My uh, camera cut off with memory. I've not deleted all the old footage from the old video, other videos. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you so much, everyone who bought some bits and bats. Um, yeah, wish list is down below. Um, again, thank you. So damn cold. But that's some. Oh, some nice heat coming from that now. Oh, both at the same time. Both at the same time. Go away. Go away. I said go away.